Good morning, anyone. This is Daniele Capezzone, a view from Italy, the Watcher Post from the Utopia Studios in Rome. How many things change in four weeks, in five weeks, in a month? Uh, one month ago, when Mario Draghi's government passed the vote of confidence at the Chamber of Deputies and at the Senate, uh, in his parliamentary speech, the Prime Minister dropped a line, a sentence about the irreversible nature of the euro. And it was a bit bizarre, but some commentators uh, raised uh, a debate, a bizarre debate, uh, asking Mr. Draghi how a Europhile like him could accept as a coalition partner a Eurosceptic like Mr. Salvini, and at the same time asking Mr. Salvini how a Eurosceptic like him could support a government led by a Europhile like Mr. Draghi. You will remember that here at A View from Italy, uh, we said that that kind of debate was absurd, was bizarre. How could you ask a politician to express himself about what may happen in 70 years, in 140 years, in one generation, in three generations? And we urged anyone to de-escalate the few and to let sensible Europhiles and sensible Eurosceptics walk together and join forces. Um, the debate about the EU in Italy is often bizarre. So many commentators and pundits and experts who are skeptic on any other topic in their life who think that anything could be subject to their critical scrutiny. On the contrary, when it comes to the EU, it's a sort of dogma. It's a sort of religious thing. And they reject any objection in terms of anathema and superstition. You either worship at the altar of the EU orthodoxy, or you are regarded as a monster. But all of a sudden, that's why I was saying that in one month many things can change. Last Friday, wisely, uh, in his press conference talking about the problems of the EU vaccination campaign, uh, Prime Minister Mario Draghi dropped a different and very wise, from our perspective, line sentence, explaining that the best thing would be to cooperate in EU as a bloc, but if this proves difficult or impossible, any state will have to do on its own, to do by itself. Well, it was bizarre. The very same commentators who had praised and applauded his Europhile sentence were the first to rush to upload also this uh, Europragmatic or Eurorealistic sentence. We don't have to rush. We uh, maintain the very same position now and one month ago. And we wish that this pragmatic attitude could become Italy's attitude on any other topic related with our position in the EU. And we also wish that Europhiles and Eurosceptic, sensible, reasonable Europhiles and Eurosceptic could work together and help Mr. Draghi use his authoritative position to push for a European renegotiation process based on four points if we can give some tips and suggestions. The first one is to prevent the return, the disgraceful return of the stability pact parameters, which would hit any chance of vibrant recovery in 2022-2023. The second one is to push for a multi-tiered union in which any state can decide to participate in or abstain from programs that suit or don't sue it, damn. I can hear some religious Europhiles who will say, oh, Daniele, you are talking about a sort of a la carte Europe. Yes, I'm doing just so. When you go to a restaurant, is it is far better to be able to choose from a list rather than being imposed a fixed menu. The third suggestion is to push for a sort of sovereignty bill stating that Europe, that 
national parliament can reject or modify something that comes from Brussels. European rules may be paramount unless they are overturned or modified by national parliament as our German friends do through the constitutional court. And the last point, which is from a free marketeer perspective, the most important one, we should prevent the introduction of a Euro Area Finance Secretary with a mission of harmonizing our fiscal system. Harmonization is a word which can sound good, but perhaps it's dangerous. It's not a good idea to have a single and unique fiscal system from Finland to Portugal, from Germany to Greece. Perhaps it's better to have fiscal competition between different states so that they won't level up taxes, but so that a low taxes state can act as a model for high taxes states. This is what we wish could become a platform for this cooperation between sensible Eurosceptics and sensible Europhiles. That's all for today. See you next Friday here from the Utopia Studios, a view from Italy. Have a nice weekend.